Hey everybody, I am joined by Steph Sanyati. Hi! She is wonderful and amazing. We were on a panel at VidCon, I believe. Yes, we were. It was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for moderating. Of course. And that's how we met. And you just have a really wonderful story to share. Tell my audience a little bit about what you do on your channel. Sure. I started YouTube when I was about 11 or 12 years old. So it's been over a decade, but wow. it's been across a few different channels. Um, and originally I started, well, I'm going to be the abridged version here <laughs> as best I can. I started originally because I felt very isolated in the community I grew up in. So I found community online, especially through YouTube, um, where I got to explore queer identity as a child in a town where that didn't exist. Mm. Um, so I thought I was gay growing up. That wasn't the case. When I moved to Toronto, I realized I was transgender. Um, so I'm a transgender woman and my channel is dedicated, well, it was dedicated a lot to documenting my transition process and educating people on mm -hmm. trans issues and trans topics and trans terminology. Um, and I'm in this weird place now where I've done that and I don't know what to do anymore. But um, my I work is, about that. yeah. Because like, you're like, okay, that happened. Yeah. Now I'm gonna live my life. I don't know what to do. And, and, and that's, it's, I listen. <laughs> we could go into that. It's it's. There's a lot there. I don't. I I just. I I would. I feel like it'd be a disservice to just repeat the same topics I've done over and over again. Totally. Right. And wouldn't that be? Because I thought about this. Because I we will. I do want her to educate us as a community on how to be More sensitive. Than happy to do that. Just because I know that I'm always afraid I'm going to misstep and I don't want to offend anybody. Because <laughs> that's not my intention. So I'd love for us to learn together. Of course. However, I do think that there is something to be said about moving on, because yeah that's what we do yeah definitely and you've been so brave to share your story so openly and honestly and then now live now your what? life yeah exactly i think the general the, the overwhelming narrative for trans people in our society here in canada and u.s of uh, the states of america mm -hmm, that's the mm -hmm. way you say that right that's the way you say yeah that. um there, it's so focused on physical transition and laverne cox says talks a lot about this if you look up laverne cox yeah, or trans just a new speech. black. Yeah. Speech. She's amazing. He, absolutely. But she talks a lot about that outside of her acting career. She talks a lot about people are so fixated on your body and about surgery and about hormones. And then once that's once you once you stop sharing that, people lose interest. Because mm. suddenly their perception of you is so based on your body and, and your medical transition that once that's not the the focal point of what you're doing, it becomes like it's not you anymore like it's a different story weird. it's really weird that's interesting really weird. I, I mean i think in general as a society we're very focused on appearance yeah, definitely and, look, and so i guess i could see why that would be the focus but then wouldn't they want to know like what's next like Some, a lot of people you. do what else is yeah. you you know it's, what i mean because that's I, like such a small i know it's a it's a huge deal yeah but it's such a small part of who we are exactly exactly and um there, I definitely have a lot of viewers that are that are mm -hmm. so on board to see what I'm going to do next. But I think it's also it's it's kind of both ways. It's not just them watching me being like, "Where's what are you are? Are you talking about your body anymore?" It's also mm -hmm. me sitting here like, for the past three years, I've built my entire career on my physicality, and now like, what do I do? Like, mm -hmm. there's so much I want to do. I want to of do course. music. I want to do acting. I want to direct things. I want to do all that stuff. But I almost don't know where to start. Yeah, and, it um, can almost be like frozen. Yeah, because it when it's always been about one thing. Yeah. Then what? So just so my audience, we can like kind of get on board with you. We sure. know where you're at. Talk about how you realized that it wasn't that you were gay. Mm -hmm. It was that you were transgender. Oh, right. You were transgender, a transgender person. How do we yeah. say that? So a lot of people say like, don't say it this way. Say it this way. I can explain for you. Thank you. So um, trans or transgender. Trans is just like an abbreviation mm -hmm. of transgender in this context of gender, right? Um, is an adjective, right? So when okay. we say tall woman, mm -hmm. it's like that's the kind of place where you'd be trans woman or transgender woman. Gotcha. When people say transgendered, like it's a verb, mm -hmm. it implies that it's something that happened to you. Oh, gotcha. And the reality is it's just an innate part of your being, like just being it a just tall is. person, yeah. right? It's not that you're talled. Yeah. That person got talled, right? It's not like that. Totally. It's, that person is tall. No, that person that really is transgender. Sense. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the grammar. There. Less than one. Exactly. And, you know, I think I think some people, when, when I clarify things like that, and, and I'm so glad that you asked me to clarify it, I think some people um, think it's unnecessary, but the reality is the way we talk about people and things it's is... really important. Like, yeah, 100%. It shifts your entire perception of that issue. Because if yeah. you perceive transness as something that happens to you rather than just something innate about your being... Yeah, that's a whole... It also like implies it can be thing. prevented. Yeah. Right? And, and it, it can't. Yeah, like... 
in the same way that people for it's still happening like praying the gay like yeah, you could change exactly. it exactly that's not how it works no exactly but thank you for clarifying because no I've heard I know that I've misspoke in the past and I've apologized and tried to learn so we're learning together yes yay yeah great okay so oh, we, but mm -hmm. how I realized right you want yes. me to talk about that okay so uh, growing up in this small town, I was also the only gay person that I knew of. I was the only out gay person. Listen, Let's listen, <laughs> I was not alone, okay? <laughs> but I, I, people perceived me as alone and I didn't really have role models or resources to explore gender and sexuality. Mm -hmm. So I understood them in very binary ways. And I thought that because I was kind of feminine and because I liked men or boys, because I was a teenager, mm -hmm. um, I thought that meant I was gay. Because yeah. that was like the narrative that I was fed that was the my only entire life. Other option. Exactly. Um, but I had a very hard time in that community and I had to leave like immediately after graduating high school. Two days after I graduated, gone. I was out of there. And I'm so grateful I had my parents' support to get me to Toronto where I could be safe and thrive. Because yeah, um, safety is a big issue. Oh my God. Especially yeah, in small I was towns. not safe there. Like I had an LGBT plus workbook out probably years ago where I was like, safety first. Yes. If it's not safe to come out, I know it sucks. I hate that that's the world we live in. But right. safety first. Yeah, absolutely. You can only be a murderer for so long until it's not... That's very dark, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely... I experienced physical violence. I experienced harassment, vandalism. I wasn't... Like, I, could, I didn't leave my house. I never... Like, I okay. lived two... Like, two blocks from my school, but my mom drove me every day because people would try to run me over with a car once. People... Listen, I wanted to go get pizza one time, and they started screaming at me, and I never went back to the pizza place. Like, there were so many... I felt I was so forced into my basement that I never left. So moving to Toronto where oh. I could leave and experience things was so mind blowing. Um, and that it was crazy there. To me. As if you being you affect, oh, yeah. affects some, that's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, the, the most intense incident I had there was somebody, uh, my mom had this Jeep, she loved her Jeep because she's a very small woman. She's like 4'11 mm -hmm. and she likes feeling big and strong. Uh -huh. So she had this big Jeep and one night uh, somebody had, the police said it was a machete because of the way it was cut, they sliced what? the tires on the vehicle and spray painted slurs on the side of it. So my mom just had to get rid of the whole vehicle. She couldn't look at it ever again. And it, it like, it bled into every aspect of my life there. It was so, somebody had a machete on my property I just know, because I, I was in my house. Like I wasn't so safe there. Yeah. But it's okay. I've well, experienced you're in Toronto. that. Yes, and I've processed that. It's all yes. Good. So I'm in helpful. Toronto now in the timeline. Mm -hmm. We're on the timeline. Yes, here. okay, we're moving along. I'm yes. in Toronto and I'm working at Shopper's Drug Mart. And they actually have a great trans-inclusive policy. And you'll notice if, you, I mean, if you're savvy, you might, I don't know, you might notice um, a lot of trans people work at shoppers and it's because they can't be fired for their gender. And, and I think now in Canada, that's law. So that's okay, great. That's good. But um, that's fantastic. So I worked there. I met trans people working there and I met trans people uh, like as coworkers and as clients. Uh -huh. And I learned just by talking to them and hearing them talk to me, I kind of saw myself like a mirror in those people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, this makes so much more sense than everything yeah. I've ever experienced. And I, um, one of the people I met working there kind of mentored me and, and showed me how to get a doctor that would, you know, listen to the right things and help me get hormones and help me get on the path to, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it worked. And I, that was like three or four years ago. And it's all history now. Ta-da! Yay! Yay! <laughs> and as far as, because I know back back in the day, yes. when I was trained, which is, oh God, like 10 years ago. Okay. I'm old. Never. <laughs> it's all, you know, real relative to how I am. When okay. I to, <laughs> yeah. But um, when I was trained, yes. they said that therapy was like mandatory. Yeah, it Is was. Is that still the case? Um, no. Okay. Uh, so what I had to go through to get my hormones, which was the first step for me, and not every trans person wants or needs hormones yes. to feel okay, but I needed them and I wanted them. Um, so I went to my new doctor. I explained I'm experiencing extreme discomfort because of my gender. I know I want to transition. How can you help me with that? And basically I went back to him three times over the course of three months, once a month, just basically to catch up and say, this is something I still and want. I still, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, the process was called informed consent. So mm -hmm. I was given a form explaining all the side effects and he talked to me about them too, of course. It wasn't just papers say, here, sign it. Like he made sure I understood everything. Yeah. And I did even feel before. so different. Like, Absolutely. Things are happening. And there's irreversible, irreversible changes to your body physically too. Hmm. Um, and, and obviously that's the point. I wanted that. Yeah. Right? But yeah, I want, that was the whole goal. There's still a, a, a certain degree of gatekeeping that I think is somewhat necessary because it's a you know, it's a medical thing and it's permanent. And mm -hmm. I think there should be a certain process. And I think what I experienced a three month wait, I think that was reasonable. That's totally, I, I feel the same as an outside perspective. Yeah. Like three months seems fine in checking in yeah. to make sure you still feel that way. Exactly. 
Um, so I understood all of the effects and side effects and I signed the paper and I was given my prescription. And then uh, there's guidelines in Ontario at least called the Rainbow Health Guidelines that uh, so any doctor, in, well, any doctor in Canada really can access this information and it can tell them um, you know what to prescribe at what point, what mm -hmm. patients should expect at what point, and like how to increase dosages over time. So really, there's no excuse for any Canadian doctor to not do this. They they have the resources right there. It does not take long to get them. That's awesome. And um, I do know um, when I was doing research for my workbook many mm -hmm. years ago, and you can let me know if this is sure. still correct, but there is a lot of like black market. Yep. And that's when it gets really dangerous because yeah. it's a prescription. It's it's for you. It's yes. catered to you. Exactly. Um, and making sure that if you are feeling this discomfort and you're wanting to get the change mm -hmm. that you you know that you go through a doctor because yeah. that's the safest and really the only way yeah and it's, it's great that in Canada we have access to things like that um, and there are certain places like I know in the UK it can be years and years and you have to see therapists and, and I mean I, I, listen I see a therapist because I need to not because same, like same yeah right because <laughs> um, life is hard and that's got nothing to do with my gender but you know I, I, but I think there's a certain degree of understanding you need to have, and I think informed consent was enough. But there's certain places like in the UK where you have to go through like 20 different professionals that have to say, yes, you need this, but they don't trust your input for yourself. That and it's, so it can be invalidating. Very, and I, can, I cannot imagine how frustrating. And you can find a lot of experiences online if you look up like UK transition. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. You can find so many stories about like, they've waited for years and years and turned down by this. Like it just... Yeah. And I share any helpful resources yeah. and links in the comments. So if someone is out there and struggling, they can find the right help. Yeah, and, and that would have I don't that would have been really hard for me. And I'm I'm glad I didn't have to experience that. Yeah. But I'm encouraging y'all to still do your best to stick to the main pathways because it can be very dangerous if you get into black market stuff. Mm -hmm. And we don't want we don't want you to be hurt. No. No. Okay, so then getting the hormones, mm -hmm. started the hormone treatment. Yep. How um, was how was that? It was great. I think a lot of people, when they first start with hormones, they have all these placebo effects. They're like, oh, I've been on hormones three days. I can feel my breasts growing. And it's like, that's not real. But <laughs> it's okay if it's like if, if, if it makes you feel better, that's then yeah, thing, absolutely. Yeah. Embrace that, right? Um, so I did update videos every month for a year. Wow. Uh, about I've what I was updates. experiencing. I didn't know that was okay. Yeah. How cool. And then I did another, I, I haven't done one for like a year and a half probably, but I did, I, I tried to keep people updated with my hormones and stuff and, and what I was experiencing so that they could, you know, they could know what to expect in there. Yeah. In there. And of course, everybody has a different experience. Everybody's body's different and responds to these drugs differently, but it's nice to be able to follow along and have some idea, right? Um, and, and really what it mostly affects is uh, fat distribution of your body. So the way that testosterone mm -hmm. places fat on your body and estrogen does are very different. So um, my, my fat shifted more into like hip area, butt area, uh, away from like masculine perceived the thing is to remember I know. it's all like yeah there's so much there's so much that surrounds the topic of gender and transition that can make people feel like there's one way to be a man or one way to be a woman and that's not true so it's it's weird to talk about it in very binary ways but understand that nobody's body is wrong no, and but this is just generally speaking exactly if we are speaking binary right for the sake of understanding medical like where things yes. go right um so estrogen also uh caused breast development in my body which i didn't have much because i'm naturally kind of muscular mm -hmm. so i ended up um, having breast augmentation not too long ago actually but um some people experience really impressive growth <laughs> Think of it like hormones. Basically, hormone replace hormone replacement therapy is basically puberty again. Yeah, with the hormones that better match your gender. So whatever your body would develop. Exactly. If you had those hormones, that's right. just how your body. Because everybody's body's different. Exactly. So think about like a like a eleven year old girl, for example, that's starting puberty. Well, I don't know how when it starts for everybody. It's different, of course. But eleven, th right? So think about how much they change and develop from eleven to twenty. It's going to take the same amount of time for trans people. So I've been on for four years. I have the same development as like a 14-year-old girl, <laughs> physically, with estrogen. So it you have to be patient. This does not happen overnight. No, yeah. Um, and, and I think a lot of people want to do things immediately, but it's important to me. I've always been very clear that this takes time. It's not overnight. Yeah. And surgeries, of course, can help with that, but those shouldn't be seen as mandatory because that's expensive, painful, and dangerous. Totally. And they're not all covered. Like, no, no surgeries no. aren't covered, so it's super no. expensive. Absolutely. Like, I had a, um, a viewer of ours had reached out because they were looking for funding because it was okay. like they, their parents didn't support it and they couldn't get anything, and it's so expensive. So yeah. just making sure you ask all questions, do all your research. I'm sure there are foundations and support yeah. and things you can, you know, apply for and try. This is so great. This will be really helpful. Thank you. I, do you mind if we then get into, like, 
things that people do that are offensive that you don't sure. even realize? Sure, yeah. Because that's what I want. Because I know that I have an older audience. Yeah, okay. And sometimes they're... I know the ones that just don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, and I... I I've, I've been there. I get it. I, I like, with my family, I've had to explain things. And it's yeah. not that they are, they want to do anything wrong. It's just that they don't, they don't, it's hard to wrap your mind around it when it's such a different concept. Yeah. But I can help. Okay, perfect. So I know that I personally, in the past, have, like I said, transgendered. Yeah. And people explained why that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted us to at least talk about that. But are sure. there other things people do similar to yeah. that? Yeah. are offensive, but when we don't mean to? Yeah. And, and I want to make it clear that, like, Let's say you say one of the things I'm about to explain and somebody corrects you on it. It's not that they're personally attacking you or that they personally are horrifically hurt and wounded and you have to like sell your life to them to make them feel better. <laughs> it's more that the way you say things and word things is, is indicative of a cultural thing, a cultural atmosphere that we're trying to change to better suit everybody, not just trans people, but trying to make a better culture for everybody to feel comfortable and to feel like they're their best selves, right? Um, so it's not personal when somebody tries to correct you on something. It's it's trying to make the world better. Yeah, we're all learning. Exactly. And so see it as like a, 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 a learning moment. opportunity. Yes, yes, exactly. The same thing, different ways. Exactly. <laughs> um, so one thing in particular that, that a lot of people say that they perceive as a compliment that can be kind of backhanded or condescending mm -hmm. is, um, I didn't know you were transgender or something like, you look great, like if I say, on a panel, for example, mm -hmm. that I'm trans, to clarify something I'm going to say, and somebody says, you look amazing. That can be kind of, it, it almost like feels like, right, because it implies that trans people don't look amazing, mm -hmm. or that because I'm trans, I'm expected to look bad, or I'm expected to look trashy, or I'm expected to look ugly, or I'm expected to look manly. It implies so many things that you expect of trans people mm -hmm. that are negative, or that you perceive as negative. I totally see that, and I wouldn't have... As a, as a non-trans person, I mm -hmm. wouldn't have thought of that. Totally. Not that I've... You didn't do it. I no. didn't do it. <laughs> you didn't do it. No. And I'm not mad at the person that did it. But it was a thing that, like, I didn't really have an opportunity to teach in that context. But I think that's something that happens a lot when you meet a trans person and you're surprised by the fact that they're trans, which is okay. Because, listen, I promise you, you've met trans people before and you didn't know. And it's okay to be like, oh, I didn't know that about you. That's interesting and surprising. But it's... When, when you say things like, oh, I didn't... Like, I'm surprised because you you're beautiful. So mm -hmm. It implies that I shouldn't be mm -hmm. because I'm trans, that that you expected me to not be beautiful. And I don't know. There's, yeah. there's layers to that. I totally see that, though. Yeah. Um, another thing might be um, something that I, I got a lot. And, like, keep in mind, I went to school for makeup. Like, I learned how to do, like, That's fashion. That's why your makeup's always so amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. She's a teacher in your ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I learned everything from, like, this kind of thing to, like, sculpting monsters and, like, creating mm -hmm. aliens and stuff. And, and, and something that I experienced a lot or did experience a lot when, especially when I was more visibly trans before I had surgeries and hormones, was um, almost like I, I would, like, people would say, but you're better at makeup than me. And I'm a girl. Like, it implies that I'm not a woman. And that's not what you just did, no, to be fair. Like, like, just for the... Yeah. Okay. I was but, like, no, you're legitimate. You're just... You're good at what you do. Yeah, exactly. Because I went to school for it. Like, it's mm -hmm. not that... It's not that because you were born a cis woman or cisgender woman. And let's clarify what cisgender means. Because that's something a lot of people don't yeah. know. And people use that term a lot. Too. Yes. And I think a lot, a lot of people think cis or cisgender is a made-up word, but... For the record, all words are made up at some point. But this has been around for a long time. As long as transgender has been around, cisgender has been around. So like a hundred years. In medical context, cisgender means you are, your, your gender expression is congruent. Is that the word? Yes. It's mm -hmm. the same. It's congruent. Mm -hmm. It's the same as your assigned gender at birth. So you would be a cisgender woman. Yes, I was born a woman and I, I identify as a woman. Right. And I would be transgender because I am a woman, but I was, I, I was assigned male, mm -hmm. right? So like... I don't even see it, and I'll get into this now. Oh, Actually, I'll get into this now. Yeah, I'll get into do this it. Right get now. Into it now. Some people um, see transness as you like. Some people might say I was born a man, but I am now a woman. And the way that it is really is mm -hmm. that I've always been a woman. Yeah, you're just in a man's body. Is that well, how you see it, or not really. I like my body is mine, and by virtue of me being a woman, it's a woman's body, mm -hmm. regardless of what surgeries or hormones I've had, right? But um, I, I think because how do I word this? When, when we see it in a way that says, oh, she's a woman in a man's body, it gives people room to say I'm a man. And I've never oh. felt like a man. I've never been a man. Like, even growing up, some people say, oh, you were socialized as a man. And there's a degree of that. But also, 
Not really, because I was, I see it as, I was socialized as a trans woman. I'm Mm -hmm. inside my body. I'm screaming every day. I'm not enjoying the privileges of maleness that I had growing up. I'm like, why can't I be happy? Why can't I develop in that way? Why are people Mm -hmm. shaming me for liking certain things? There's not really much privilege there. There's a lot of loathing and there's a lot of of hiding. Oh, yeah. Um, So the understanding that trans women were once men is just a little bit of a shift. Mm -hmm. It's not quite accurate. I can I see that. It's it's just that they were perceived to be men and they were told to be men and they were forced to be men because of something because of the circumstances of their birth, right? Because I was born with a certain body part, I was given a blueprint and because I deviated from that, I experienced a lot of of shit. Yeah. Can I swear in a shit? Of course. Cool. I don't know how else to word it. No, I experienced I a lot of shit. Yeah. And and I think that's not really the same as growing up as a boy and being a boy because those are completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. So for all intents and purposes, trans women at no point were men. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but but it's okay to like, it, I know that's a weird, that's a weird thing to understand and to wrap, to like it's, it's in, it involves a lot of like shifting the way you see gender as a whole and right. that can be difficult. Totally. But I think it, like just because I under, I, I see where you're coming from, mm. I don't think it's that hard because I, I think, think it's essentially the idea that whoever we have identified as in general has just always been us. Right, exactly. So it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter if I was born one way, mm-hmm. looking one way, but if I knew I was this other right. way, I've always been that other exactly. way. Exactly. So to say, I see why to say that, okay, I, a girl born in a man's body would right. imply that I agreed with that man's body. I never did. I right. Was just, I was always a girl. Right, exactly. And it also implies... a trans implies... girl, because that's what the trans means, right? would be like... The difference between cis, like... Yeah, it's like the prefix is cis and trans. Cis mm-hmm. on the same side of trans across. Mm-hmm. So transgender is across gender, mm-hmm. right? And and gender... It, I know we're uh, really getting into it, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It, like I just don't want to imply that like I have changed genders because I don't see it that way. It's more that I've changed my body to match my gender. Yes, okay. Does and that I, make sense? Yes, and I think that's like why I don't... That's why I see the other thing could be essentially kind of not offensive, but a misunderstanding. Yes, a big. It's a We're fundamental misunderstanding of what gender is yes. for for trans people. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. I hope I explained that pretty well. Yes, I like that though. It cool. makes sense, and it helps me at least better understand how I can be more sensitive. Okay. Cool. Okay. Anything Good. else people say or do that's um, really hmm. offensive without realizing it? So something else people do is they'll like to. Let me give you an example. Today. I had an Uber ride where, listen, I, listen, okay. <laughs> this man was very nice. Okay, let's, I can't tell the story. This is weird. Okay. Um, okay, I'll give a hypothetical situation. Let's say I'm at the mall with, I'm, I'm on a date with, uh, or not even on a date. I met somebody, literally I was in a store and I met a dude and we're hitting it off. And then somebody comes up to me that knows I'm trans and tells that dude that I'm trans. Why it's is that it's their place? Right, that's part of it, but it's also... There's, there's a time for me to tell that person that I'm trans and, and to help them understand what that means, not only for me, but for them mm-hmm. being attracted to me. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are so scared of what that means for them as men, right? They're like, oh no, I'm attracted to a trans woman. Does that mean I'm gay? No, it doesn't. Because no, trans women are men. Gay men are not attracted to me. Look at me. I'm a woman. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what about this? You know what I mean? And I think it's, they overthink it to the point where it's like, it, it, it just, it fucks with their head so much mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to, you know, it, it's very simple. Trans women are women. Therefore, it's totally natural for straight men to be attracted to them. It's totally natural yeah. for gay women to be attracted to them. Mm-hmm. And, and I think there's, there's so much stigma around that. And that's not necessarily something somebody says, but it's more just the general cultural perception of women, of mm-hmm. trans women in romantic situations. And if you look at media for the past, like 40 years, yeah. any trans women in media have been villains or predators or sex workers that are really men or like it's been funny because they're pretty but then they have a really deep voice and that's the punchline haha mm-hmm. or like south park humor right and that is everybody's perception of trans women that has been it for so long that was my perception of trans women when i was a kid and that's why it took me so long to understand that i was trans and so for me to be in public encountering this man that's attracted to me we're talking in a store for example and somebody comes up and makes a point of me being trans outing me effectively to that person. And then that person's perception of trans women is predator, Mm -hmm. scary, secretly a man, out to get you. What do you think his reaction is going to be? It's going to be either 
rejection, which is fine and fair. No, nobody's obligated to be romantically interested in anybody, okay? But it could also be violent. And trans women suffer such a high murder rate. Yeah, murder rate and suicide rate. So just forty-eight percent of us for a minute. Forty-eight like, percent of us have attempted suicide. That's that's a staggering number, you guys. That's that's probably more than any other community. I can't confirm that, but I'm no, but I can't imagine another community with a higher statistical suicide rate. No, there isn't. Um, when I did the LGBT work, I mean, it's been a few years, so new stats are probably out. Mm -hmm. But it was for therapists such as myself wanting to be more understanding, and it was like it couldn't have been more strong of language to be like, you need to recognize, you need to support, yeah. you need to try to use proper language and let them teach you because they're hurting. Yeah. There's so much, like, the best way I can describe gender dysphoria, which is the diagnosable thing for trans people, is, like, heartache and, like, isolation and, like, just, like, perpetual loss of a life that you don't have that you, that you need. Mm -hmm. And the best way to get those things fixed is through medical transition usually it depends yeah. on the individual but that's why it's so important yeah for that to happen right to, to listen and to let yourself learn from us right and i appreciate you okay. for hosting this so that people can learn of course because i feel like a lot of people are afraid to ask yeah they are or people ask really inappropriate questions because at the wrong time <laughs> totally because i've had um viewers of mine reach out and mm -hmm. say that they are trans mm -hmm. and people will feel it completely appropriate to ask about their genitals yeah. and their I sex should, i should talk about that actually. yeah Do, can i go, go into that? for it tell me about it so um because that's there's, not appropriate. No. I mean, there's certain contexts when it's appropriate. It's appropriate to ask me about my genitals if we're going to sleep together mm -hmm. or if you're my doctor. Fair enough. Otherwise? Yeah. Why would you, you ask me about my genitals? No. No, you wouldn't. You would also, like, and I mean, obviously, like, you are cis because we've had this conversation. Yes. But as an outsider, and I mean, I mentioned this earlier, you've met trans people that you have no idea were trans. If you did not know... Yeah, you Katie, wouldn't. You have... How would you know? Right. Why would you just assume that she's cis and she has a, like, but with trans people, you assume things about their body and about their genitals, mm. but then also you ask about it. I don't understand why you do both, but I mean, and then the point is genitals are nobody's business unless we're sleeping together. And then some people will say, oh, but how do I know if I want to sleep with you if I don't know what genitals you have? And that is a fair point, but let me. But then you're already at that point. It's kind of already in that romantic realm right. where hopefully you'd be already having a conversation about the fact that you even are trans. Right. Its own At that point, you should know. <laughs> that's already its conversation of its own. Like, right. And then... And, and not public. No, not no, public. no, 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 absolutely not. So I, I, I've had experiences with dating people that they've been very attracted to me and they've wanted to, you know, engage on mm -hmm. every level, but they're terrified, for example, of what their family will think. And I mean, I live a very public life, so it's entirely possible the family would know. Mm -hmm. But if I was a private person, if I didn't have a YouTube channel and talk about these things openly... Why would their family know? That's none of their business. They don't need to know that. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess it's just about understanding that, first of all, gender and sexuality are separate. I think I should have, I don't know if I talked on that earlier. I've talked about it in another video. I'll link down in the description my sex health understanding. Love that. But yeah, we can explain a little bit here too. Well, no, I, I mean, they're separate, right? So like you can be transgender and gay, or you can be transgender and straight, mm -hmm. or you can be transgender and bisexual, pansexual, whatever. Yeah. Or you can be cis and all those things. Because sexuality... Gender is one side, sexuality is mm -hmm. another. And they don't interact at all for yourself inwardly. Yeah. It's only externally that your sexuality is important when it comes to gender. Um, what was I saying before that? Um, asking about genitals, genitals or sex. Yeah. Um, it's only appropriate in context when you know you're going to be involved with somebody physically. Yeah. And And... I think what is a good exercise for people is to stop assuming people's genitals. I think that's the thing is assumptions. Everything right. you were saying about that, which is like assumptions, assumptions, assumptions. Yeah. If I if I know one little bit about someone, I'm assuming all of this. And right. I think the sooner we can recognize our own assumptions, which are really mm -hmm. our own stigmas. We all have our own stigmas. Biases and things. Yes, because we're looking at through through our own filtered glasses mm -hmm. of experience, of society, of whatever. Yeah. And sometimes it's just nice to take a break and be like I like this person because I like them. Right, as a person. Yes. And it, I don't have to assume all this stuff about them until I get to know them. Right. Because 99% of people I encounter that are attracted to me, in public, like if I go to a club or if I go to like a bar mm -hmm. or if I'm in an Uber, <laughs> for example. Just for example. Just for example. It's not really relevant. Mm -hmm. Those people assume I have a vagina because they perceive me as cisgender. Mm -hmm. But the second I, there's any any hint of transness, it's all of a sudden like, oh my God, like what if she has a penis? And for the record, a lot of... like there. 
I don't know. I don't know if this is common knowledge for everybody, but there are surgeries for people to mm -hmm. get their genitals altered. Yeah. There are. It's called uh, sexual realignment surgery or gender reassignment surgery. But I like. I think sexual realignment. Makes that sounds more sense. better because getting back in line with what you've always sexual been. Sexual. Yes. Organs. Mm -hmm. Right. Instead of gender, I'm not changing my gender when I have a surgery that alters my body that way. I'm changing my sexual organs. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. Yeah. Realignment. Okay. So it's also not correct to assume every trans person has or every trans woman has a penis or every trans man has a vagina because that's not true either mm -hmm. um so like you said it's an assumption thing and that needs to be unlearned and it can be yeah but it just takes some conscious thinking about that yeah and, practice and yeah. being a little more thoughtful with the way that we speak yes exactly but that will help everybody in the end i think so um any other tidbits or I don't think anything else about like offensive language there's a million things I could really talk oh, about I'm sure but I just meant like when they don't really intend to because there's yeah, a lot of jerks out there of course yeah but I mean those are the big ones that I've encountered I'm, I'm sure there's some I'm missing but they're not in the top of my head right now that's okay um but I mean I mean you can find a million trans people online talking about those if you look up transgender microaggressions mm. if you're interested in learning about these things that might be the best path to go because okay. I think that's what we generally call them mm -hmm. is microaggressions yeah because it's like that little stab that right that you don't intend to do but mm -hmm. it's still a stab yeah um and there's a lot you can learn if you look up that kind of information perfect yeah. well thank you for educating us my pleasure and for sharing your story online because i do love the fact i just have to say i love mm -hmm. the fact that you found community online when you needed it and now you've created one for others yeah so thank it. you that's I why like that's why i started sharing my transition is because i wanted to give back to what helped me yeah. and i'm glad i could yeah it's wonderful. So Thank go you. check out her channel. We've done a video over there. Yes, um, she's amazing and wonderful. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Oh, see you guys later. Yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.